Hello and happy Weird Wednesday, my weirdos. It is me, Haunted. Today we are going to be working on Lynn Lai's bookkeeper or bookkeepers, but we're going to be working on one primarily. Um, so yeah, we're going to be working on uh, bookkeeper one, I guess. He's he's the main one that comes up on the uh, artwork, I think. So um, we're going to try and replicate wherever I've thrown the cards, <clears throat> the kind of purplish undertone that everything has on these miniatures or on the, on the artwork. So we're going to try and replicate that kind of purpley tone. Hey, Doug, welcome in, man. Good to see you. Um, so yeah, we're going to be doing everything with a, a little bit of a purple undertone. And this is something I've started doing with all my flesh or not all the flesh, but lately most of the flesh work I've been doing has had the, a purple base tone. And uh, I really like the way it turns out. So that's what we're going to be working with now. Granted, those a little bit bigger. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how it translates on this. Like it, on the Dreamer Iconic, it worked beautifully. Um, but on the smaller scale, we'll see how it works out. <laughs> yes, it does need a move. <laughs> it does indeed. Okay, so we're going to start. Oops, not that one. That's black. We need. There we go. We're going to do uh, some nightshade purple. This is really, really, really dark purple. Almost black, but not quite. We're just going to kind of do this as a, a base coat for anything in the in the shadow areas and stuff. I got to tell you, this, the um, female models in this kit, holy crap, they're very, very tiny. I, I like almost felt like they're out of scale tiny. Um, I was severely worried I was going to snap her in, into many pieces while I was working on it, but I finally got it together. Um, sorry, I got a hair here. I can't quite. Get rid of, I think, nope. There we go. Thanks, Cat. Appreciate that. <laughs> blame, blame Stormy. Hashtag blame Stormy. We're probably not off the screen, aren't we? Yeah, there we go. That should help. Just a little bit without knocking it. Nope, not going to do it. Uh, I tell you, um, <laughs> there is a, a Schrodinger principle when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, plastic tack or sticky tack, whatever you want to call it. It is both extremely extremely sticky and tacky and will stay everywhere and will not adhere at all both at the same time it's like you never know which which uh which one you're going to get to you open the box or in this case stick it to a piece of um cork all right, I'm going to give that just a wee second to dry there. Right. 
I kind of got to judge where he wears darkness on this guy because he's kind of bent in a weird angle. I mean, it, it's not a weird angle. It's just a hard angle to judge if you're, uh, if you've not got him mounted up. So I'm just knocking this in while we're waiting on the, uh, the foot to dry. <laughs> Stig, I was discussing uh, blue tack or sticky tack or poster tack, whatever you want to call it. It is, um, it, it lives by the Schrodinger principle. <laughs> That is what I was uh, uh, mentioning. Okay. Hopefully that's dry enough. I should hold them for a bit. <laughs> I imagine that would be an interesting one to come in on. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least you know what we're talking about now. <laughs> when you find a darkness, say hello to darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so he's looking like he's got kind of some uh, dark purpley blue kind of pants. So we're going to start with some of my good old fashioned um, hex lichen on the top portions of this. Gonna kind of look strange as uh, like streaky for a bit, but we'll work on it. Now this is, I'm gonna say, a very big experiment. We're probably gonna be. Tying things and nope, that doesn't work, and repainting over it. So, I hope you're okay with that. Um, like I said, this worked great on a larger scale iconic model, but I'm not sure about this purple undertone with a uh, with the smaller scale. So, we'll see. Well, I just have to play it by ear, folks. Same kind of color for the shirt, I think. Switch over to Hex again. Um, I don't know, man. We're, we're, we'll see. I'm just kind of playing with it right now. Um, on the Dreamer Iconic, when I did this, I um, I was only working, well, I was working the the, the whole thing, but mostly the flesh um, had that purple undertone. And the skin tone that I used had a, a bit of, you know, yellow in it, so it was kind of a compliment going on. Um, but like I said, that was a larger scale bottle. It worked, it actually worked pretty good on the, the Lion, too. I did the same thing with him. Again, it was just his, uh, his skin tone. That was done. Um, but it seemed to work pretty well as on him, too. And he, you know, he's relatively small scale. Even though he was a huge model, he was similar scale to these. So, oops, I forgot I left that on. Sorry.
Could you put the paint where I'm asking you to, please? Thank you. I don't know why I said no. I need my little markers back. Make sure I stay in frame. Let's see here. Are we in frame there? Pretty good. Maybe that'll help me keep it in frame there. <laughs> Maybe I should do it with a brighter color so I can see it. That might help too. That should work. Okay. I'm going to come in and mix a little bit of that um, nightshade with some... Uh, Some of that uh, hex lichen and come in here and work on this a little bit so it's not such a harsh line we're dealing with. Just working a little bit of that into wrinkles. We're going to have to probably switch to a smaller brush here. And then we go back to our uh, Fox Bite Seven Sins brush. This has kind of become my new favorite. Absolutely did not catch that edge here. I don't know how we messed the pants cuff there, but we did. <laughs> Just kind of working some of those shadows into these uh, recesses here, his legs. Uh, there's the the fabrics pool fairly taunt here, so we won't get a lot of wrinkles, right? Some on the um, that seam there. Okay. I'm going to do that same thing here. Yeah.
they were just coming in here finishing up that that flesh uh the purple on the flesh It's gonna kind of look, gonna look like crap until it doesn't. <laughs> that's the best way I can explain this one. Um, that's kind of the way Dreamer did. He looked horrible until suddenly, oh wow, he doesn't look so horrible now. Um, so yeah. Come in with that darker up underneath his chin here. I have to wait till that dries a little bit. Can't go too crazy there. So um, I watched a new series um, in in between this stream and the last, uh, or last stream and this one. Um, one I did not think I was going to like. I, I've heard many good things about the anime, but it's one of those it's very long running anime, and I just like you know I don't know if I want to bother trying to catch up on <laughs> a thousand episodes. <laughs> Um, but they have a live action adaptation of uh, One Piece on Netflix, and it was only eight episodes. And I was like, "Well, I can do eight episodes." Of course, you know it's not the whole series here, um, but it, it covers it covers most of like the villains you see in the first um, season, and then. Um, I think it kind of skips ahead to like third season where they're actually going into the grand line. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. I enjoyed it. The casting was really good. The, I was really afraid it was going to have horrible, horrible voice acting. Like it was going to be an Indian produced company and they were all going to be, you know, just bad, bad voice actors, but no, it was a very slick production. Voice acting was good. Uh, even the casting was really pretty good. I mean, it was, it was very close to like spot on. Uh, at least from the pictures I've seen of the crew. Um, other than, well, Monkey is, uh, and he's a Mediterranean, uh, East, East Indian, I think, um, where he looks more Caucasian in the anime, I guess. But, you know, other than that, the casting is pretty dead on. Um, but yeah, it's really, really pretty decent little production i was surprised kind of makes me want to go watch the anime now so i think it did its job <laughs> hey spill paint pot how are you doing welcome in things are pretty good we are doing a kind of an experiment today working on like purple undertones and stuff so um everything kind of looks like a mishmash right now um but hopefully it will start to shape up soon enough No, that's not the one we want. Uh, where is my white? My white's over here. up there
Okay, so we added a little bit of white there into that purple, and now we're working up some highlights on these pants. I need to add just a bit more Y is just a tiny bit too close. I mean, like, I can see the difference between them, but I don't think the camera does. catching that seam here. All right. A little bit more white in there. Wasn't that supposed to be like the 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 name of the <laughs> the band if we were to have a band with all the, the weirdo streamers? Doug, I think that was it. Something to that nature, if I remember correctly. I guess we lost Doug before I could, uh, before I replied. Oh, well. Maybe he'll come back and I can ask him again. But I seem to remember that being the name we picked for our band. Or he picked. If we were going to have a band. Highlight's going to work there. Get a little bit here at the crease of the knee. That seam. And I begin here on the on the hip. Okay. All right. Go back to that other color here on the lower portion of the seam. Nope, that's too dark. Okay. 
see if we can catch that one just on the edge of the here we go just a little bit clean up the edges some go okay now so we're going to work up the um the highlights like we did on the other leg here Again, <clears throat> and hopefully, before that dry, let's get this blended in a little bit there. starting to bring that purple in there or the the lighter purple up here on the top of the leg get our old hex lichen back in here bring that uh wrinkle down a little bit further. Intense, right? Okay. Now we're going to come back in here and do some of these uh, wrinkles here. Kind of accounting for the um, the shadow cast by the arm of the book there. If you're kind of wondering where we're doing that there. All right. Build that highlight up here on the knee a bit because that's where it's most stretched. We're just going to cut these uh, wrinkles in here again with that hex like, and it's got a little bit of the uh, the highlight color mixed in with it. It'd be okay because we are just hitting these wrinkles to to blend them in a bit. And we're going to go up to that that lighter color again and work back on the knee some.
and back to the previous color. see how that um that holds up before we go back over it with anything Hey, Bastille. How are you doing? Welcome in. Um, I am working on one of Lynn Lai's bookkeepers. We're doing kind of the, trying to do the purple kind of cast to everything that is on the artwork. Oops. Cannot see for the glare. But yeah, that's what we're attempting to do there. Something similar to that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Working on that little seam there, trying to bring it. Whoa, that's a roll. Whoa, too bright, too bright. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, had any good games? I have not had any good games, uh, other than uh, video games. I've been uh, uh playing. Oh, God, Tears of the Kingdom. That's the one I was trying to think of. And uh, No Man's Sky came out with a new uh, DLC and uh, expand, expedition. So I've been working on that. But uh, not, not played any Malifaux games. Um, at any time recently to think of. If, it, if, if I could have gotten it going up here, I have a hobby store like half a mile from my house. If it could have caught on just a little bit, um, I'd probably be playing at least once a week. But it's an hour to my other hobby store. And with my schedule and uh, commitments uh, after work and stuff, Unfortunately, just can't do much gaming. Not to mention, you know, I don't like paying, you know, three sixty a gallon for gas to go to the hobby store. <laughs> Come to Houston for the GT. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't even think so. <laughs> I'd love to come visit it, you know, but I just I would definitely not be playing. You guys. <laughs> you guys are too good. I would provide zero challenge. Although, I probably could learn a lot there, but... <laughs> Maybe, maybe next year, yeah. Um, Doug, I, I don't know if uh, 
you weren't around when I asked, but I saw your comment earlier, the Chris Alice of misery. Was that, wasn't that the band name that we were going to have? If uh, the weirdos had a, the weird streamers had a, a band. 43 registered. Fantastic. That's a, that's a pretty nice little number, man. That is true. Vashel. It is true. I just, I, I'm really competitive and I have a hard time just losing over and over and freaking over again. It just, it, it drains all joy out of it for me. So yeah, I, I can't get past that learning curve because of it. That's what, that's what I was thinking. I thought that, that, that registered a note in my head. I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's what it is. But you weren't around to ask. <laughs> <clears throat> Where do I live? I am in Georgia, that show. About an hour and 45 minutes from Weird Headquarters, actually. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I am absolutely 100% sure if I were to go to a tournament, I would lose every single round. Um, but I'm just hung in just everyday play. Like, the only game I've ever won has been a demo game with somebody that was actually stupider at the game than I am. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm bad. Um, as, and the bad thing is I literally, I felt bad for the person. I know we're doing the purple thing, but I'm going to put some brown on his shoes. We'll come in with a purple wash on them to kind of bring them in line. Um, <clears throat> but the game, I was just drawing like absolute fire and I was playing, uh, pre nerf Ophelia too. Um, and it was just, it was not going well in his favor, not going in his favor at all. Um, and the first, like the first model I deleted, I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I actually flipped really good and, and did what I was wanting to do. And he's gone, you know, that model's gone. And then the third model dropped. And at that point I started saying, I started apologizing, uh, like a Canadian, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> And I literally just tabled the dude, but I have never drawn like that ever. I usually, Lama can attest to this. She's seen it. My, my, my deck, no matter which deck I use, and I've got bunches, they all draw like crap. <laughs> Uh, Doug says I've been ducking again in and out. Had a call at a local game store because they're doing the Iron Painter competition again this weekend with another model. You sculpted it and what chicken? Nice, very cool, very cool. Get that. You had four cards and a negative damage flip. Oof. Yikes. That sticky tack is really sticky today. I'm trying to get there so I can paint the damn shoe. I don't know if you can tell. It literally pulled paint off the model. I've never seen sticky tack do this before. Mm. Three part one sphere. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Okay, let's see if we can get that shoe put in here.
this purple or this brown actually has a little kind of purple in it it's not it's actually a little lighter than rhinox hide but kind of similar family um, so that's where we're going to use it we'll put a, a purple glaze or wash over it um, here shortly once that's all dried up Final lines of the files for the fate deck. You just, oh, nice, nice. You're just getting all sorts of fancy, Doug. You got the 3D printed um, trophies, and you got the 3D printed terrain, and you got the 3D printed painting uh, competition model. You, you're just doing a little bit of everything, man. <laughs> And the oh the, the the rules the custom gameplay and stuff you just got your finger on a lot of pies man. I noticed that was not blended for today and once I looked from the other direction, so see how that looks when it dries. Need to start flying over to the States and get some big uh I mean I've heard I've heard um you know that the overseas metas are really, really different. Now, you know, obviously, I don't know anything to, to judge on that, but that's what I've heard, that they, they play entirely differently. Well, even, obviously, even the metas within the uh, countries change dramatically, depending on the, the, the locale. Like, Texas guys, apparently, are very, very aggressive in their play um, and believe that you, you can win games by deleting models, uh, not just focusing on schemes and strats, <laughs> at least according to the the last podcast I listened to. Um, you know, because if you delete the models from the board, they can't score. They go in, they score the, like first three or four points and then, then kill, 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 kill. <laughs> so, yeah, which, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of that way myself now. I try and get at least three points and then, then you know adapt if if they're more scoring then i'll try and do deny and then if um they're going for more kills i'll you know going for the the throat kind of thing um can't score when you're dead correct <laughs> yep that is very true if the dead condition cannot be removed i like that so yeah i, I at least you guys play a little bit more like I would. So, I mean, I probably could learn a good fucking deal from you. Just how to be more efficient at that. <laughs> this is going to be very bright against this. This is uh, the top of his vest. And we'll come in with some purple uh, recess wash here in a second. The stuff here is wild. <laughs> Weird Kim's very picky about extra plays. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be exceptions, of course, you know.
when I set up today, I set up a little too far to the left, and I cannot flick my brush out on my leg, which is driving me nuts. But I'm afraid if I shift it over so I could reach my my brush flicking point, then everything would have to be reset on the screen. So we're going to stick here and just suck it up. But I wish I could flick my brushes out proper. <laughs> That's cool. I, I I wish I could be a little bit more like that. I I don't know. I got very competitive. I, well, I can't say I'm very competitive. I just I don't like to lose. If, if that makes sense, I competitive implies that you're really good at something most of the time. I'm not. I just don't like to lose. Let's call it for what it is, folks. I don't like to lose. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just, I just like it a little less. Than <laughs> just, um, like, I think, I, I think a part of it is I have a very skewed sense of uh, competition, winning, whatever, from Infinity. I never lost a single game of Infinity. I played all of, well, last half of second edition, first half of third edition. Never lost a game, not once. Um, <laughs> so it kind of gave me a skewed sense of uh, of uh, winning versus losing, I guess. <laughs> so now that's all I want. I want to win. <laughs> Don't really care about fun. I just want to win. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't even know if I'm that serious about it. I, I I play it off more as I just don't care or that I just want to walk away from. It. See, either one of the two things. I, I'll either play it off as I don't care or I just say, let's do something else um, if, if if something's not going my way. And that's, that's one of the reasons, like I said, I have a hard time with Malifaux because you have that very long learning curve and I just don't want to sit through it. Like if, <laughs> if I could pay somebody else to lose those games for me and me get better from it, I would. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm starting to develop a stray hair on my brush, and that just upsets me greatly.
All right, Vashel, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate the chatting. Have a good day. See, I had mixed some uh, purple with that uh, pale blue um, to do the lower half and shadow half of this. I'm sorry, but that, that bristle is driving me absolutely nuts. I'm going to have to get rid of it. So give me a second to get my uh, my knife. Where is my knife? There it is. There we go. <clears throat> Hopefully we won't have to deal with another one. It, it kind of has been a little wonky, that one hair, ever since I got the brushes. But... For the most part, if you shaped it up, it was fine, and it'd be fine for the, the rest of the model. But this one is just, today, is, it's a nope. I'm, I'm going to be sticking out in your way for the entire model. So he's gone. I can no longer put up with that. Okay. Okay, I mean, let's see here. Do we have that kind of... We do need to come in a little bit further.
we're just kind of working that um these purples back in around the, um, the pale blue. Okay, now we can kind of start bringing that blue back in a little bit here. Oh, still a little bit uh, too purple. Kind of working on building that blue back into it, or the pale blue. It's kind of a blue gray. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Kind of concentrating. I forget to talk sometimes. It happens. <laughs> hey, Crow, how are you doing? Welcome in. Appreciate you joining us. Doing pretty good, doing pretty good. <clears throat> I'm finding this miniature to be very, very challenging to me because uh, we're doing something different, you know, because reasons. Um, we're doing kind of a, a purple tinted model, and uh, it's fairly challenging. <laughs> um, So, yeah. Somehow or another, my cat got any hair in my wet palette. Despite the lid being on it. Not sure how he did that. Cat magic. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's fun.
Okay, so we're starting to cut in some of the flesh tones, and again, this is this purple tenant, so um, it's going to kind of come off a little pink or mulberry, or I'm not sure quite what color this is, but yeah, it's not quite in the purple family because we got some reds and stuff from the flesh. Um, but yeah, this is, we'll be working out kind of from this. This is kind of one of those, uh, it was kind of a surprise color, like a gotcha. <laughs> um, because we're using, you know, paints that have more than one pigment in them. Um, which, you know, all flesh tones are going to have more than one pigment in it. So um, you get kind of unpredictable results. But I think in this case, it's actually going to work pretty well. No, Mozilla Taller says it's pink. You're using it, it is, it looks pink on the screen. It's it's a little bit more uh on the purple side than than uh than pink um in reality, but to get my uh my old goggle glasses out here in a second get that face painted Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Make sure we get all that area of paint that we want to because um, that color is quickly disappearing. I never make it quite like that again. So, goggle glasses or bug eyes or whatever we want to call them. that are still in the field of view there.
sorry, we're doing a little detail, so I kind of clean them up. Do you, do you see the, the purple and that skin working together now? I just mixed a tiny little bit of the purple into the flesh tone. And like our final highlight will be just, just flesh tone. And I think that's going to work pretty, pretty good. I don't know if that's the damn garbage truck that just came by at this weird ass hour or if that was thunder. That was loud as hell. I don't know if y'all heard that or not. My mic's pretty good at picking up most things, but hey. Damn. I'm gonna have to get a little bit more. That flesh made up, I think. Here we go. I think that's close enough. It keeps uh because I'm working off of two drops of you know paint side by side, they're starting to mush in the middle, and then just one's moving to the next osmosis or whatever, and it's uh messing up the mix. So I had to make some more off to the sides separately.
this ear. I'm going to catch the edge of these fingers down here. Probably wouldn't be catching all that light, but there. That's what I was trying to correct. Okay. Going back to the flash tone here. Or the, the lighter flesh tone, I guess. We need to do his eyes too while we're at it. <laughs> Don't really want to. They're actually they're actually really close to lidded, so I'm probably not going to do much of anything here. Probably take a little ivory. And maybe mix just the tiniest bit of yellow into it. Like super duper, hopefully, a little tiny bit of yellow. Yeah. Barely perceptible. Ooh. Okay, that's interesting. We had a little flesh left in that brush. Actually, even better. I mean, that makes the mix better. So we have some of the flesh tone, some yellow, and then ivory. I do believe it is thunder, guys. We are getting a heck of a boomer here. Okay, so like I said, his eyes are very, very small, very, very tiny. Um, we are not going to go through a lot of effort and try and put pupils or anything like that in there. We're just going to work the rest of the stuff and call it done. I'd rather the skin tone be worked up a little bit better.
There we go. <laughs> kind of building that up a bit. Hope y'all, I hope that was on screen. <laughs> it's hard to tell when you get into the small details if, if you're even on screen because you're too busy concentrating on them. So hopefully we got it in there. Just reinforce this a wee bit. Hey, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's it's real hard to do a focus with uh remotely, um, because I don't have control of the camera. That means um, Kim would literally have to sit there and focus over and over again manually. So we um. Sometimes we get it in focus and sometimes it's not. Aim for being in focus the greater amount of time. goodness my cat has moved i can stretch my legs oh thank goodness that was nice all right <laughs> cat has been holding me hostage for an hour and 32 minutes a hairline there. That's really hard to figure out. A little bit of that face shadow around it. Noomzilla, welcome back. Okay. Come in there. I'm going to get that eyelid, I think. We're going to try real quick to get that. If my eye will focus on the eye. There we go. Okay. Ooh, goodness. Uh, uh, 
my neck wants to pop, but it's just not going to do it today. And this is just the straight up flesh here. Coming in and kicking on that highlight where the eyebrows are. That just got a little out of control. Not what I meant, but okay. Got it fixed. Took a second. Oops, that's why it wasn't working. There's a book in the way. <laughs> oh, boy. It's like, my brush is not going where... Oh, oh, it's some of this stupid book. Whoops. There's a... One disadvantage of these glasses. They, uh... You tend to focus on one spot, but you don't see what else is going on around you. Do the... The lens distortion thing. <laughs> That's very true, Doug. I couldn't be setting myself up for trouble. Thought my deck was bad before. <laughs> you now have four black jokers in that deck. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we don't need any more bad luck. Thank you very much. I mean, I guess you could say all the crap that I go through has, has been a sense of, of good luck and that I survive it somehow. Um, but it seems like bad luck <laughs> when you have to feel it the next day. I mean, not many people can launch themselves off a half flight of stairs and not break something. So that part is good luck, I guess. But the feeling like you got hit by a bus doing 80, that part's not so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get to spectate painting now. Oh, that's a bummer. It's interesting. I wonder what that uh, Bayou starter box looked like after after they were done. How good did they do? Or alternately, how bad did they do? <laughs> You're going across your lap at the moment. <laughs> All right. And the really, you know, the weird thing is I really don't know quite how I launched myself off. Like I was not distracted. I was watching the step, but my foot just kind of went down the wrong, wrong way. And it rolled over. And when it rolled over, there wasn't anything holding me up. So I went flying. <laughs>
and dab his brush on the nearest paper after slopping paint on it halfway up the I learned it from watching you, Dad. Parents who do drugs have kids that do drugs. Or in this case, paint miniatures. Y'all remember the, those commercials? I learned it from you. <laughs> uh... Good PSA commercials back then. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm glad I was on the right track there. That, that was the first thing I thought of. So I think we're kind of getting where I'm wanting on this flesh here. Hopefully y'all see what we're doing. Not sure if the camera translates well or not, but that arm in particular I think is looking pretty good. Again, the camera doesn't really do it, show it well, I think. But I, I figured I had to start doing something besides purple because, uh, you know, well, <laughs> There's more to the model than purple. But when you're doing a purple cast to everything, you know, you're going to see a lot of purple. That's not what I wanted. It went everywhere. Mm -hmm.
right, just kind of coming in here and bringing that pale blue back on the highlights here. Okay, so getting that worked in. We'll have a, a lot more blending and stuff to do, I'm sure. Again, I got to kind of reestablish where, where we are in relation to the light because of the, the way he mounts. He mounts, see his foot is kind of vertical. So that's basically vertical on the model because his foot plugs into... That shoe, I mean, that shoe, that shoe plugs into this spot right here. And it's almost vertical. So I have to look at the model. Like, this is vertical here. I don't know if that shows on the screen. Yeah. That's close enough. Eh. So just trying to reestablish where highlights are supposed to be and stuff. Okay. Nope, that one's leave. Whoops. Oh well. Actually, I don't think I did.
kind of blending that in a little bit there. Okay, we actually did not do the final flesh highlight on the arm. Let's do that real quick. here that. if I wanted to I could probably come in here and pop another flash highlight on this I may we'll see Hello, Moto. Oh, dear God. I have no idea who that is I'm sorry Oh, frick, I just dropped the phone. Oh, well. <laughs> I was in there trying to hit the deny button and dropped it. Oh, well, it's done. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> uh, yes, go tell them I am busy, cat. Do your secretary work. Yeah, I was really surprised. He's been relatively quiet because uh, when I was first starting up the stream, talking to Weird Hobby, he was vocal as hell. And I was like, oh, God, it's going to be one of those days. He is not going to shut up the whole stream. Um, but he just came out of hiding to, to yell at the phone. So I uh, can't complain. <laughs> hey, Total, how are you doing, sir? Good to see you. Okay. Oh, oh God, if I could just get my head to crack, I'd be a okay today. The neck is just like, nope, not going to do it. Because of uh, reasons. Uh, paint his hair with the same brown that we did the shoes. Again, this brown has a, a little bit of purple undertone to it, so be a good base coat. There he goes again. <laughs> so has uh, anybody been keeping up 
with foundation. I need somebody to talk to about this because, you know, I don't get to talk to anybody about it. No one I know watches it. Ha ah. Now, Doug, have, have you read the book series? Because that, that's what I'm really want to talk about. Somebody that's seen the movie, seen the show and read the books. Because I've been talking to somebody that's only read the book and they're like, what, what is this? Huh? Who? What? Because it's apparently the books are a completely different set up than, than the show. Like not just, it's like all they took is the character names and, and the tiniest bit of a, a plot line and made the show from it. But after that, they didn't follow anything from the book. You read the original trilogy, but not the extended series. Okay. Okay. So how do you find, does it, follow anything more than like the general overview and the names or is it a little bit more closer to the book mm -mm. no i haven't that was the point i haven't read the books but i've talked to somebody who's read the books but not seen the series so i was looking for somebody to seen the series and read the books <laughs> to see what they thought, how they correlate it. Because I was kind of afraid, you know, I keep seeing it in the third and fourth slot um, for, for weekly views. And I'm afraid that if it doesn't approve, especially since Ted Lasso is actually whooping his butt, um, they may cancel it. So I'm like, well, am I going to be able to read the, you know, the third book or relative or, or second and third book and, and kind of know how it ends, or <laughs> am I screwed <laughs> if they cancel it? Yeah, but I mean, that doesn't matter. <laughs> Negate the fact that it's literally stomped his butt every time it's out there, it pushes it to third or fourth. Um, so that just, like I said, worries me. I know how most networks are. Apple is a little bit better. They're, they're not as finger trigger happy about cutting shows, but Mm. So in a no spoilers way to talk about it because I don't want to spoil it for me. Yeah, yeah. Non spoiler if possible. Okay, so more like the psychohistory itself, right? It's more more on the, the overarching scheme of things, the, the big picture items versus the individuals. I mean, I, I can see that now. I mean, I, and I, I imagine that was more interesting in the, in the read format. Um, but I can't imagine them trying to do that without, you know, care having a character driven series, I, I don't imagine it would have worked. So that's probably why they chose to do the more focused on the character thing, the individuals. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, I think I'm going to um, work on this book. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Mm. So 
pretty much all the characters in the show are characters in the books. They expect that. Yeah, that that's kind of what I was gathering is that you know there were just there were names and not a whole lot more in the book. You know that they they focus more on the individual now in the series. And like I said, I don't I don't think it would have worked to do it any other way. Um, you know, if they tried to follow the book format, I think it would have probably not done done as well as it did uh, as a character driven show. All the stuff with day, dawn, day, dusk, uh, emperor is in the original. Series. Oh, okay. Probably, I'd bet money it comes up in the in the extended series. If not, it's it's uh, an enjoyable ad. Like I can't. I find the, the intrigue there and the infighting and mistrust and all that stuff very interesting. There's literally a hair in this paint. Oh my God. How did you get in there? How did I not see you? <clears throat> yeah, they're not compatible with my usual skip arounds reading style. Yeah. <laughs> not like magazines, chapters stitched together. Yeah, yeah, I imagine that would, uh, having continuity without characters. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I was wondering about that, if they were tied together. Hard to imagine that all the sci-fi, you know, which I, I absolutely love sci-fi, but the fact that I never read the books that they were based on or that they, they all draw from. Damn, there is another here. Cat, you have been busy today. Shedding your furry love everywhere. I'm going to tell you, his guy looks horrible from underneath. The good thing is, unless you're a jerk, you don't look at the underside of a model. <laughs> you're a monster if you do. Herbert straight up said that Dune is what he imagined would happen if Foundation failed and Emperor Mankind fell into the extended darkness. Yeah, that makes sense. I dig it. <clears throat> I feel like I probably should go ahead and, and order the books. And of course, like I said, it won't it won't tell me what what I I need to know. Like you know what happens in season three. Good googly wiggly guys. There another hair. What in the ever loving crap is going on here?
think I got it that time. Maybe. <clears throat> First book to posit the idea of the galaxy. Really, that's amazing. That's pretty wild. The stuff that's just so commonplace now. I always, you know, wondered where it kind of started. And the funny thing is, you know, I I um was like in summer reading program when I was a kid, you know, the hang out at the library, you had a list of books to read, um, suggestions based off, you know what the librarian had seen you pick in the past and enjoy and stuff like that. And, you know, I read a lot when I was young, but that was never on any list. Never once saw foundation on list. I mean, uh, you know, some of the other, what I consider classics were, but not that one. Psychohistory predictions. Uh, Ship said that the Empire of Mankind would fall into 40,000. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Warhammer 40K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm thinking, yep, yeah, that falls right in line. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wasn't even thinking about that one. I was, I thought in the series, he said 10,000 years, but I, it's been a while. So I guess I'd have to go back and watch it. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to pull in a little bit of uh, red. Put my fist on here. What was that about? Okay, when that dries, we'll get a little bit more going on there. That is cool. I, I had no idea so much pulled from that. I mean, I, I of course, read the wiki, you know major sci-fi book that most other sci-fi books draw from, but I'd never, never knew what all come from it. And I'm sure that's just the, you know, very, very truncated list, right? Um, oh, the big names. Let's see here.
and get the book pages painted in here. Their base coat. And if you look, there's a little bit of a purple undertone to that too. How about that? How'd that happen? Okay, Virick, how are you doing? <laughs> it took a day keeps reality away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're uh, just talking about the uh, a book that's uh, apparently the father of all science fiction. Um, yeah. How are you doing, Beric? Welcome in. What are you working on today, or are you working on anything? Is it just a take it easy kind of day? Or I guess evening for you. It's like way evening, so it's probably like bedtime stuff. You're watching me to go to sleep. I get it. <laughs> Uh, still not dry. Man. Man. Just finished evening chores. About to get to some brush strokes. Oh, you are going to get some brush strokes. Okay. So you... You must be a little bit of a night owl. Because this is like, what, 10? Pushing 10 over there. 11. Okay, okay. You're six hours. Okay. Fishy Nephilim. Cool, cool. I need to finish up my Nephilim. Nakima is really, really a cool model. And I got real close to finishing her and then got pulled away to do other things. So I just never gotten back to her. But she was starting out to be a really, really pretty model. Like I said, probably one of the most interacted models I've ever painted, like as far as like number of people that have clicked like or, or commented on it has been the, the best I've ever done. Yeah, you know, I would, 
with that one, the first thing I want to do is go, you know, look at some some really colorful, vibrant uh, saltwater uh, fish because, you know, they have such brilliant and beautiful color schemes and the patterns and stuff. So that I would definitely have to find me some real world references and paint them with them. We're just uh, cutting them pages in best we can. We'll come in. We'll do some. Uh, we'll do some uh, writing on them and stuff. Eventually. I mean, honestly, if you just kind of connect these lines, you don't even have to do the writing. And the writing kind of comes out, right? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is my vocal cat telling us about how horrible his day was. I'm probably still going to do some writing, I think, on them. Just cause. <clears throat> okay, so let's get some, we'll do a little brown, a little bit of my brick red or black red.
Okay, got that done there. Woohoo! Let's uh, come in. We're gonna pull a little bit of that. Uh, purple-ish into that black-red into a little bit of um, washi dashi stuff on it. Try to reinforce a binding here. Come back in with our Mephiston and a little bit of Evil Suns. We're really about out of well, Evil Suns, or is it? Yeah, Evil Suns. I was going to say Wild Rider. No, Wild Rider is a more orangey one. Okay, now I'll put a little bit of that. My fist on down. It's like a, not a glaze. Uh, more, I guess it is more glaze. We're going to thin it down a lot and kind of blend that in a little bit. Make it not quite so intense.
we're just kind of working that red around the upper edges here. Probably didn't realize I got kind of quiet there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, Virick. No problem. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you for hanging out with me. Sorry if I didn't catch you. Quit on the red for a moment. We'll come in. Get our um, purpley wash going here for our issues. the hair I managed to find paint that doesn't look like chocolate. Not so sweet this time. Well painted, but not sweet. Thank you. <laughs> How you doing, Llama? Been a bit. It almost looks like he has a, a spats on. That little line right there. I wonder what that is. Is it a spats or like a just a fold in the shoe? Not sure. Tough call. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> Not here long. Understandable. Another little uh, wash of that purple that we put on there. I think that may work. Uh, Nomzilla could alert indeed. <laughs> no problem, Nomzilla. Appreciate it. Cool star caught himself and followed with his face. Ouch. One of my, uh, one of my best friends in, um, high school, her, her nephew was always smashing his head on things. I mean, you know, I thought I was accident prone. This kid, he really needed to be wearing a helmet 24 seven. Um, <laughs> and uh, I started calling him Bonk. He bonked his head. Bonk, bonk, bonk. It stuck. He's 27 years old, and his nickname is Bonk. Everybody calls him Bonk still. <laughs> A 
apparently the tradition continued and he still smashes his head on things. <laughs> Newt somehow guessed who sent center brownies and cat sock. No, no. I can't imagine who that would have been. The, the cat socks though was a uh, was a nice addition I like that All right, just about done with this book. The way I'm getting the book where I want it. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's working out. So we're going to have to work on his tie there a little bit. And I'm afraid most of my... Uh, Purple highlights have now dried up, but we'll see if we can revive a few. Way too watery. Thanks so much. I get for trying to revive it. Got it way too watery. Okay, let's see here. Get some white in there. Let's see here. Now I'm going to pull a little bit of that black line back in. We lost a little bit of it. We uh, put that dot on the, the tie. So we'll pull in a little bit of separation back in here.
So not going to work with me. <laughs> it says, nope, ain't going to do it. All right, Doug. Well, thank you for hanging out, man. I appreciate it. This is uh, the longest you've hung out one of my streams in a while. I do appreciate it. I will uh, endeavor to catch yours as well, my friend, if I can get off the work in time. Okay. to come back and catch those sleeves later. I got a little bit over on them. Over paint, whatever. Uh, he does not have a pocket on that side. That's good. That's handy. You guys notice I'm not trying to rush this guy too much. I'm trying to get this kind of purple thing going on that I like. Um, normally I try and kick a miniature out of uh, a stream. Um, this one I'm, I'm more concerned about getting the look where I want it. And if it continues to the next stream, so be it. Um, I do have the other book. Where is she at? The other bookkeeper. The one that's doing the uh, the pose from the magicians. Um, got her already ready to go. So if I do finish him up on the next, if I don't finish him up till the next stream, then I have her to jump to when we are finished. Um, which, that's a, another excellent show to watch if you've not seen it already. Although... The first season or two, kind of angsty. It's hard to get through. But once you do, well worth it. Oh, and if you can if you can put up with their hate of cats, apparently. <laughs> I think they blew up 50-something cats in the show. Not like literally, not actual cats. But, you know, for the, for the story, 
like, damn, what does this dude have against cats? <laughs> They did have cancer puppy though, so that, that that they did do dogs too, but it's mostly cats. This might be way too right. We will see. Oh, it looks really bright. Once it dries, we'll know. Come on, hit that damn scene, dude. I hit everything but the seam I want it to hit. <laughs> I want you to go out there and hit the pace car. Hit the pace car? Well, you've hit every damn thing else. I want you to be perfect. This is what my brush is doing today. It's having a Days of Thunder day. Sorry if y'all don't get that reference. Will you get there? I want you to come up. There you go. Come back and fill that other in. Come in here and catch these um these wrinkles on the back side of the knee. A little bit of hex lichen here. Cause they'd be picking up a little highlight, I guess. And the same right here around the the seat of the pants. Catch that little cuff here at the the ankle. It's not really a cuff. It's just a, a wrinkle, a fold. We're going to catch that.
touch on this purple here a little bit. All right, now we're going to come back and work on those um, those uh, shoes a wee little bit. Yeah. I'm going to drop a little bit of sand into it, or dark sand, I think it is. All right. All right. Okay, just about got done this shoe over here. Mm -mm. 
So we're just kind of working the um, uh, purple back on the knee again. Kind of lost the target. That's where I want it there. And we gotta come in, blend this here at the shoulder just a wee bit better. I'm going to try and come in here and catch some of these little wrinkles on the vest here. Not getting too crazy. Oh, yeah, we're getting closer, aren't we? Jeez, Manini. Well, folks, if you are watching that little Willow link there, we'll lead you to my social medias, um, which I'm unfortunately absolutely horrible at updating, but I plan to to start getting back on it. Um, had a little flood in the basement that took out the camera. Um, so I had to get it fixed. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll be back, uh, doing photos again soon. I'm like, you know, nine months behind, but still would appreciate the, the like and the follow if you can, since they don't cost you nothing. It'd be a different story if it costed, right? <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Basically, we just have his his hair, this other boot, which is kind of buried in the plaster tags. I'm not going to bother with it. His hair and his sleeves and a little bit of edging on the vest. Honestly, we did pretty good on it. Uh, I mean, I still have the books, but, you know, that'd be sitting there pretty tedious, sitting there painting thousand covers on stream, so I'm not going to do that part. Um, if they'd been papers, it would have been a lot easier to do, you know, because then you just do that, you know, 
paper and your wash and your dry brushing and edging and feathering and stuff like that. But uh, books, you got to do book covers and then you got to do pages in between books, covers. and ugh, It's going to be a fun one. <laughs> so those, those will, the books will always be done off stream. Get a little bit of um, where's my pale blue? Pale blue here. Yeah, we're gonna start working on some of the edging on the vest. Try to get our sleeves done. At least get you know what's on the block done, pretty much. Although I don't know, we got twelve minutes. <laughs> That's not a lot of time, folks. We go. We did go off the collar. The collar dipped funny. I did not notice that. Really did a weird switcheroo there. Recess shading there. Make that stand out a bit. I know I should have drilled this guy's foot. I didn't want to risk it because it is a very tiny contact point, but man, I should have drilled it. This plastic tack is driving me nutty. I think he's start, starting to pull together, I think. Like I said, that, that um coloration is really tough to nail. That kind of purple tint, that undertone. I honestly probably should have, although I probably wouldn't have made near as much progress because I'd have been mixing colors a lot more. I probably should have broke out the Chimera uh, just because they're, they're pure pigments, so they don't, um, you don't have to guess. You don't get unexpected results as often. Uh, like, you know, magenta and, and blue makes actual purple. Or magenta and cyan, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
that makes actual purple, not, you know, brownish mud. Um, like if you try and do those with your, your standard mixed paints that have multiple pigments, they'll, they'll react in uncontrolled and unusual ways and get things that you don't want. So... And definitely probably not helping that I have kind of purple paint water here when I'm trying to paint uh, a white highlight or close to white highlight. We are, we're just kind of bringing that white around there. It's not pure white. It's still got a little bit of tiny, tiny little bit of purple and blue in it. But for the most part, it's white. I gotta follow the actual line, not where I painted it. So I think that's it right there. The rest is sleeve, I believe.
Mm, we are down to three minutes. I am not going to get those sleeves done, guys. I am sorry about that. <laughs> but it is just not happening today. We gave it the old college try without, you know, rushing like super duper rush or anything. So yeah, we almost finished up the old bookkeeper. We um, tried to kind of replicate the, uh, the kind of purpley undertones. Um, it's different, of course, but it's, it's not bad. And like I said, the uh, it is the camera's really kind of screwing with it. So um, yeah, I think that's where we're going to call it here. Um, like I said, if you're not already following uh, Play Weird. Why not? Uh, followers are free. And if you would go to that uh, Willow link there, that leads to my social medias. Um, and you get those likes and follows as well because they're free. Doesn't cost you anything. And it helps me out. So, um, yeah, we will see you back here next week with uh, more Weird Painters. And then I'll see you the Wednesday after next for my final stream. Um, until then... Stay safe, be cool, be weird, all that good stuff. See you later.